If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're trying to decide between a thoracotomy or a thoracic X lift. And the surgeon that you're dealing with, possibly me, has most likely given you some of the risks, benefits, and treatment options, and advantages and disadvantages of both procedures. My goal with this video is to point out some of the, some of the advantages of the x lift that you may not have considered. When the surgeon is trying to get to the front of the spine in the lower back or the lumbar spine, he moves the soft tissues out of the way, he moves the intestines, stomach out of the way. In the upper back or the thoracic spine, he has other things to contend with. You have the ribs and you have the lungs, both of which must be moved. But around those, you have the muscles. And to get to the ribs and lungs, you have to cut the muscles. Keep in mind, it is the muscles which contract pulling the ribs apart and allowing you to draw your breath or bring the air into the lungs. So if those muscles are damaged too much or they're damaged permanently, you may never completely recover the function in that lung. In the case of a thoracotomy, a thoracotomy involves a very big incision. A lot of muscle is damaged. When that muscle is damaged, it may never function completely normally again. Also, once the muscle is cut out of the way with a thoracotomy frequently, and probably most of the time, the rib itself is removed. Once that rib is removed, it's never there again. So essentially you have an area that is weak, missing a rib, the muscle's been damaged, and will never function the same. Also, you develop all that scar tissue which can affect the lung function as well. Now, after, you, um, after they close the lung incision, they put in a chest tube, you go to the ICU for a few days, probably have a chest tube in for two, maybe three days, then they pull the chest tube out, then they watch you another day in the ICU. So it's a long drawn out procedure, several days in the hospital, several days in the ICU, um, none of which is very fun. After that's done, what do you get for your big incision? A big scar, a big scar that's probably never gonna function and that lung is probably never gonna function as well as it could have or would have if you did not have surgery. And there's another way. That's what I'm talking about today, which is the X lift. With the X lift, what you do is you make a little incision in the skin, then you dilate the muscle. You dilate the muscle, you do not cut the muscle. Then you go between the ribs. You do not remove the ribs to get down to the spine. Once you're down at the spine, you can do your surgery. When it's all said and done, what happens is we re-expand the lung and then we close the little incision and you can go home. Some people go home that day. Most people I would watch overnight and let you go home the next day. But obviously it's a lot less traumatic than with an open thoracotomy. That does not mean there are not side effects or some downsides to it. Everything has a downside. One of the biggest downsides I see with the X lift is everybody gets some fluid around their lungs for a while. Part of that is the antibiotic solution we put in, in the body to wash the lung as we're doing the surgery. And part of it is just the natural process that the lung produces fluid. And if it's irritated or has been irritated, it's going to produce a la layer of fluid. You, it's going to go away and it's really not a problem. I've never really seen it as a problem as long as you don't panic. You will notice that you'll be short of breath for a while. When you get up, if you try to run to the kitchen or run around the house as opposed to walking slowly for a few weeks, you'll get out of breath. 
if you go to the emergency room, they're going to take a chest x-ray, they're going to see some fluid, and they're going to panic, and they're going to put a needle in there. But in most cases, there's not a reason to go to the emergency room. They cannot make tissue heal quicker than it's going to heal anyway. Once the tissue is irritated, once you've had the cut, it's going to get better, but you just have to let Mother Nature and the guy upstairs do his job and let it heal. Now, other disadvantages of the x lift I got to tell you some of the disadvantages as well, is there are those cases this, you may not be a candidate for the x lift It may be a procedure that's too big. If you have some type of cancers, uh, we may need to open you up completely. You can't do it through a small incision. In other cases, you might be a good candidate. It may be you have a tumor that's benign. You want it out. Well, one option would be to go in there and look at that tumor with a giant thoracotomy incision, leaving you basically with possibly pulmonary problems, lung problems for the rest of your life. An alternative would be to put a tube in there, do the thoracic X lift, see what's going on, possibly remove the tumor or see that it's a benign tumor, and then forget about it. Or you can then repeat an MRI in the future, six months later, a year later, do an MRI. If the benign tumor has not changed in size or shape, then you have saved yourself a big thoracotomy. Um, and those are the main things. I hope this has been helpful. I certainly didn't talk about all the risks and benefits. I just pointed out uh, some of the highlights and some of the reasons why, if you're a candidate for an x lift most likely you should choose the x lift Please leave your comments below. If you have questions, I'll answer those as well. Thank you for your time.